Hi, it's Alexis. My job is to help you get back with your ex. And in this video, I'm going to explain you what's going on in your ex's mind after the breakup. The stages, I've listed six different stages anyone would go through after a breakup when they decide to end a relationship. And you'll see that towards the end, there are two different stages at the end. My approach is slightly different than other coaches and I'll explain you why and I'll explain you the danger of following some of the advices you see online. The reason I did this video is because I was on a call with a client who told me, hopefully I listened <laughs> at your tips, Alexis, and not uh, anything else that I saw online. So bear with me, you'll understand the stages they go through and understand what you should be doing depending on where you are at those stages. I get my ex back .com. Everyone deserves a second chance. The third stage is uh, the release phase, and it's something every single dumper would feel and experience after the breakup. This phase is about between a few days and two weeks. Um, depends on the reason of the breakup, depends also on how difficult the breakup was, and you have a role in that. It gives the, the satisfaction to know that they stood up. Um, usually breakups are a very huge decision and the reason people um, break up or the, the process of people to make that decision take months. And so when they finally decide to announce that they want to end the relationship, they don't have this burden anymore and they feel released. Okay. In that phase, they also expect you to be in pain. It's very important because they know it was painful for them to take that decision. They know that you care for them and therefore they expect you to be in pain. And that's why it's very important in that stage to really go into no contact, to really respect their decision. You don't necessarily need to accept, you don't necessarily need to agree, <laughs> but right now you need to let them have this release phase because if you're clingy, if you're needy, if you're showing that you are suffering uh, from this decision, you will make the, break, the breakup harder than it is and you will basically make that release phase, you postpone that release phase. Um, and so if you take months of being clingy, first of all, they will really be um, confronted in, uh, comforted in their decision and then they will still have the release phase after you <laughs> stop talking with them and that release phase might be longer. So if you want that release phase to be as short as possible, make the breakup easy. What I forgot to mention is that you have to go, everybody will go through these phases in the same order. So the first one, every single dumper will go through that release phase. Now, you have to take the quiz <laughs> because first, because you want to know. <laughs> and I know a lot of people who are watching my video, they want answers, right? So if you want to have the answer, whether you have any chance to get back with your ex, in other words, whether your relationship can be recovered, Take the quiz, it takes three minutes and the idea is to provide you a score. If you have a score below 15, it means that I can't really help you. It means that what I'm going to tell you, uh, the techniques I'm going to tell you, the no contact, all this kind of stuff doesn't really apply to your situation because in reality, if you have a score below 15, it's kind of a lucky game, you know. Um, what I really want to assess is whether your relationship is strong enough, whether your relationship is unique that can be recovered with those techniques, psychological uh, techniques. Take the quiz, it takes three minutes, the link is in the description, and you'll have the results right away, and it's free, of course. Stage two, the excitement. Now they are single, now they, they release from that um, burden, and now they want to enjoy. They do things they were not able to do in the relationship, um, maybe they needed that space, they were avoidant and they felt too much pressure and now they feel like, yeah, I can be in my uh, underwear at home doing nothing and nobody would bother me. I can eat junk food, I can eat in the sofa, nobody would do anything to me. Or maybe they were anxious and they have another perspective, you know, um, you know, I feel love now, you know, I don't, be, I don't feel criticized, I don't feel that the person, I uh, have to change the person, all this kind of stuff. And it depends on people, but we always have this excitement phase not accountable to anyone, um, they are free, <laughs> they are free basically. And in that sense, you have to fake internally, to fake it also that you are excited. 
in a way, that breakup, even though it's really hard, um, you might get really hurt, um, you feel depressed um, and sometimes, it's also an occasion for you to feel free. There could be other things that um, you wouldn't be able to do, you couldn't do when you were in a relationship. It's an opportunity for you as well to excite and be excited. And uh, very often I, I suggest my clients, you know, a relationship is about 30 hours per week of time. So instead of doing nothing of those 30 hours, try to make sure that you uh, allocate time for yourself, to take care of yourself. Um, and it is very important because that's really determine the chances for you to get back with your ex. So in this excitement phase, they're exploring. Um, so contacting them is not going to work. Stage one, stage two, if you're contacting them, you are basically disturbing um, their life. You're basically entering their bubble. Okay. And this bubble will burst, but you shouldn't burst it. Okay. It's very important. The more you try to enter that bubble, the more they push back and and the, the, diff, the more difficult it will be to, for you to get back together. The stage three, which is very important, and again, every single dumper will go through that phase. They expect everything to be better, of course, they took the decision, um, but they feel slightly, um, they feel lonely. They felt like I needed that break, um, I would be better off. We all have this fantasy and we make stories in our head that by making that decision, life would be better, okay? Otherwise, they wouldn't take the decision, of course. Now, they feel the void. And again, you really need to assess whether your relationship is recoverable. If you've been dating him or her for two months, two weeks, it's going to be harder for you to leverage what you've created together. It's going to be harder. Is it possible? Yes, but it's going to be harder. So really assess really assess taking the quiz whether it's possible for you to recover. Also, another criteria is if you make the breakup harder than it needs to be, this loneliness will be balanced with that, oh, he's such a pain in the ass. So they'll feel lonely. They'll feel like, okay, um, I'm nostalgic of those moments with my ex, but at the same time, he's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Okay, so that's why you need no contact to, pro, um, to create that space for them to be excited, to, to be released, to be excited, and then to feel lonely. If you're on their back, they can't feel lonely. Okay, so it's very important for you to provide that phase, that space. And now we're getting to the interesting stuff. Stage four is the, the confusion. Um, so they had made their idea, they had believed that the life would be better. And they will have now internal battle of emotions. Very, at the beginning of the breakup, they feel like everything is great. I made the right decision. He was such, and then they would be criticizing sometimes um, yourself in front of their friends. But then they come back home. They feel like, mm, it's different. It's not how I expected. And it's when, at, it's at this stage usually that people start to get interested in rebound because they feel, um, they need to fill that void. They need that emotional support that they don't have right now. They need to cope with that loneliness and they will find someone random and date um, people in that phase because they are confused um, and they don't want to face the reality that they actually um, miss you uh, a lot. And so they will be wondering, did I make the right decision? Did I make the wrong decision? It is very important for you along the process from stage one to stage six, to really be on your A game, okay? Because when they're confused, what they're gonna do is they're gonna compare you. They're gonna compare with uh, your new <laughs> you, with their rebound relationship. And so, and we, we all do that. We all assess that you've been in dates. I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, after a breakup, um, if you're dating someone, you always compare your ex. That's normal. Everybody does it. It's natural. <laughs> so they will do that. And they would really compare what's, what they have, what you're showing them. So it's very important for you to, uh, I say that often to my clients, it's not only working on yourself, but it's also to market that you worked on yourself. So it's not about faking it, but it's really to market yourself, to show her or him your best uh, game. And so this stage is really where we get mixed signals from our ex. And if you're watching this video, and I know a lot of people who are watching my videos right now, they see mixed signals from the ex. They have questions about that. It is because they are confused. 
And when they're confused, when you see those mixed messages, never ever forget that it's because they have that internal battle. They're making this assessment. One day they'll feel like, I need him back. And the other day, no, but I took the decision. I can't really go back. And they're like, oh yeah, let's still go. We've been together for 10 years. Um, that's a pity. And then and it's going back and forth. So it's a good sign if you have mixed signal. It's a very good sign. Stage five is the pride stage. This is where you have to really listen. Listen carefully. <laughs> They want to reach. Um, they want you to reach out to them. Okay. They're confused. They think they're screwed up. But there's something in this stage where they feel. And the reason I'm shooting this video is because I've had recent uh, calls with clients who told me like, "Thanks, I listened to your tips." Where they feel like, I can give him a second chance, but he needs to call me. He needs to send me that message. And if he doesn't, and sometimes they have this deadline, internal deadline, if he doesn't, then it's over. And so in that stage, it's okay to reconnect with your ex. It's okay to break no contact, regardless whether you took the decision to break up or they took the decision to break up. And the reason is simple is because in a lot of cases, people expect just one gesture. And that's enough. If you are, so there's a lot of reasons. And the thing is, I would, I should list them, but it's really hard to list them. So if you don't know exactly whether, if you should contact your ex or not, give me a call. Uh, you have free discovery calls um, in the description where you can book a call with me for free if you have specific questions. Because it's very hard for me to cover everything. And that's why my job um, is really about coaching. It's really about being personalized and individual. So the videos are for everyone, but really quickly we get to the nitty gritty and to the, your unique situation. And I think we all have unique situations. So if you um, don't know exactly what to do next, give me a call. Few, few things or few signs that you should contact them. Um, if you were not good at showing that you cared, um, if for instance, um, your ex-wife or your ex-girlfriend said to you, you never tell me I love you love me, you never show me affection, you never buy me stuff. What they're gonna expect is that, okay, now they suffered that um, no contact, so that not contact, but they expect like, okay, if he wants to show me that I should give him a second chance, he should make that effort. So I'm not talking about big gesture or proposing, stuff like that, but really making that first move, okay? And when you do that, things sort of are, it's not, done deal, but I guess you sort of unlocked the first gate in a way. There's also the aspect of anxious avoidance. So a lot of the time avoidance, they won't feel comfortable reaching out. So they will feel um, this loneliness as well. Maybe they'll enjoy it more than anxious people, but in a way it's okay. And again, it depends on the occasion. It's okay to just test the water with an avoidant person because no contact with an avoidant person, you can do that for your, the rest of your life, okay? Anxious people, there are ways to uh, approach this. It really depends on the reasons of the breakup, the, your dynamic and the breakup itself. Again, there are thousands of cases, so <laughs> give me a call if you're not sure whether you should break no contact or not. But it's very important because I've had cases, as I said, where I told them, like, wait, test the water, she expects you to uh, show her that uh, you care, text, text her, and see how it goes. Bam! Next day they're kind of, yeah, we're together and we're working out slowly of getting back together and, and working things out. So really be careful about those tips that you see online where you see like, no contact, never, ever, ever, ever contact your ex. Honestly, um, I'm pragmatic. The logic of no contact is to really create that space. So we saw that on stage, from stage one to stage four, we create that dynamic. Now, stage five, it's really important not to fuck it up because stage five, if you miss this one, if you miss that sign that you, they actually expect you to reach out, it's going to be harder because you go on stage six and stage six, sometimes people are just like, I'm done. I gave him his chance. They think internally, well, I thought, you know, after three months, you know, with everything we had together, he could have called me. So I never ever call him again and it's done. 
This is what people can think. Okay, so be really careful. Stage six is a curiosity. So if you think, uh, if you're confident that um, if you're confident that your ex will reach out at this stage, it is because the, the curiosity, the interest level are up, and it is a great moment for you to attract them. Curiosity attraction goes really well together. So don't fuck it up at this stage. It's really important to be on your A game, to respond to them. Um, they are putting their pride on the side to reconnect. So really welcome the movement. Don't play it hard to get. It's not the point here. It's really how you welcome them and start that interaction with them, contact messaging them. A few days, getting uh, a date, a second date, a third date, and so on. If you have any other questions, if you want to comment about this video, because I think this one is kind of a um, unusual <laughs> approach, but it's just pragmatic. It's what I hear from my clients. It's what works with my clients. Don't hesitate to comment and don't hesitate also to like the video. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. I get my ex back .com. Everyone deserves a second chance.